Hello again, everybody. Um, so the introduction part where I, I, I'm going to explain what I'm going to talk about here, um, I'm just showing pictures of my main colony who are trashing a melon. It's a honeydew melon and you can see they're burrowing into it. Um, but what I really want to talk about is your new colony. Um, and I know that people are excited about ant keeping when it's your first time and you've watched the queen, you've gone through that whole development stage and finally you're at the stage that you've got workers and you want to do something, you want to observe your colony, you want to see them doing things and, and stuff like here um, with them trashing the melon. Now you're not going to get this level of activity this year but you can have let's say two and a half months of fun with your ants um, if you want to. Um, and the way to do that is not to move them out of the test tube. Leave them in the test tube, as I've said, but you can connect a small outworld. Um, so this is Queen C, um, and she's the one that I'm going to connect a small outworld for, so you can see this process. Um, about 16 workers now, tons of brood, looking very healthy. She's had two sugar feeds so far, and she's nine days since the first workers closed. Um, and this is the new outworld I've bought from Antkit UK. I love Antkit UK outworlds. As you can see, there are two entrances um, and each one can be opened and closed with a little slide, slidey thing now. Um, the lid is a two part lid, so you can either take the middle section out or the whole thing. Um, it still has an overhanging lip, even when the um, lid is off and as you can see it's got a big entrance at the top I can get my hand in it's very easy to work in there um, it has good height so I can build things up um, and here it is next to the wakushi nest um, which is harder to film into because the fluon is too close really um, the lid is a lot smaller um, as you can see it's a lot trickier to, for me to get my my fingers in here um, and the Wakushi Outworld has only got one entrance um, rather than two um, like the um, and you have to assemble the Wakushi Outworld yourself um, screw it all together on the corners there um, whereas the Ant Kit Outworld comes pre-glued pre-assembled so I've sung its praises, but the difference between the two here is that the Wakushi Outworld is £15 and the Ant Kit Outworld is £30. So you, you get what you pay for here, but I do like them and um, that's why I use them. Anyway, so yeah, uh, I got this fairly small Ant Kit Outworld and um, what I'm doing here is I'm just painting the Fluon layer on, the under side of the lip um, because fluon on an underside barrier is almost impossible for them to walk across. They might get up the sides a little bit and I will paint a little strip down the sides but they really they, they, I've never seen them yet get across the, uh, the underside um, of fluon. Um, and you can see here, look, um, you only have to paint very thin, just one brush, you know, I filled the brush up in all the Fluon layers that I did here. I dipped the brush a total of only three times for all of the under overhang and the walls. Um, and then I decorated it. So here's the finished out world. And like I said, you can watch your ants now. You've got two and a half months before hibernation. You can have some fun with your new colony, but you can still have them in the test tube. Um, and so, yeah, it's got a test tube connector on it. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to slide their test tube on. So now they are connected to an outworld. Um, and this is another thing with Laceus niger, as I, I sing their praises and say that they're a great starter species. They're so inquisitive and so bold. You know, you won't be able to do something like this with a Laceus flavus this year. But Laceus niger, 16 workers she's got. And um, yes, this was the first couple of minutes, the first five minutes, and they didn't rush straight out. They explored around a bit and saw what this was. But um, it was 50 minutes 
before I saw the first worker in the outworld. I was trying to chase after her here, trying to film her. It was a bit tricky. But yeah, 50 minutes after I put the tube on, the first worker was in the outworld, which was really nice. And it took them about, what, an hour, hour, hour and a half, maybe, before they'd found the sugar. And there was one worker shuttling backwards and forwards from the sugar to the nest. So, yeah. If you want to observe your ants, if you want to see them doing things, um, it's a lot easier to feed them in an outworld than it is in the tube. Um, and we're not going to put the, our ants into hibernation until the end of October, first week of November. Um, and so you've got two and a half months, two and a half months to observe your colony foraging around in the outworld. If you build a nice pretty little outworld like I've done here, a few rocks, a little bit of a twig, and it's only a small outworld and you can see the ants are very small in it. Um, so it doesn't matter that it's a small outworld, but they're big enough and brave enough. Um, and while I was watching the one in the in the um, sugar, there was another one shuttling backwards and forwards, taking in bits of sand into the tube. So goodness knows what they're going to do with that. Um, I suspect that what they'll do is they'll build a little ramp so they don't have to take that step up to get out. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, give them a little bit of sand and they always play with it. Anyway, thank you for watching everybody. Until next time, goodbye.